Welcome to Route 9, home of the Teleport TM, and there it is! Yeah, there was a Teleport TM back then, can you believe it? I mean, it, it has to be by far the most useless TM ever, I mean, at least Water Gun does some damage, but Teleport, it's completely useless! Okay, sure, it's nice utility when you don't have access to fly, but other than that, in battle, it does absolutely nothing! Oh, by the way, but while that Machop's doing a low kick on me, well, I might as well give you the rundown on what it did back then, because the, the formula related to the opponent's weight has only been in place since Gold Silver Crystal, and to be fair, the, the reason most people know that formula is because of Grass Knob, because Low Kick really isn't useful even for those fighting types who learn it. So what Low Kick did in Red, Blue and Yellow was 50 power, 90 accuracy, and no added effect at all. That's right, it was complete garbage. At least now it can deal some sig significant damage to heavy Pokémon, but back then, it did nothing to everyone! Yeah, yeah, can you stop saying A all the time? You're trying too hard to sound Canadian and you're failing miserably! And I shouldn't need to say it, but Low Kick's accuracy has been improved to 100 with the change of formula brought about by Gold Silver Crystal, whereas as I said in this generation, it's 90. By the way, if you're watching this video and you're having a feeling of déjà vu, well, me too, I'm having the same feeling just making it, because Route 9 is really, really similar to Route 3. It goes east from a, from a major city with a gym, in Route 3 it's Pewter City, and here it's Cerulean City, and there's plenty of trainers on it, along with a few patches of grasses here and there, and at the end of the road, there's a, a Pokémon Center, followed by a, a cave. Yeah, those are nearly identical, uh, except for the the looks, but other than that, uh, yeah, I'm having a uh, huge feeling of déjà vu. You could really run this part alongside part 7, and it there wouldn't be much of a difference, really. Although, to be fair, Route 9's a bit less linear than Route 3 in the way it's designed, but... Oh, he raises his Pokémon from cocoons? Well, unless the end result is a Tyranitar, I'd say it's a lost cause. A complete waste of time! But since Tyranitar isn't supposed to exist yet, I'm banking on the Beedrill I see there and a Butterfree. Which, well, it's an improvement over the worms, but they're still completely worthless! By the way, I still can't believe Weedle's missing from Yellow. Talk about an odd choice for a version exclusive, although I don't think the term is right when you're obtainable in both red and blue, both the original versions. By the way, it turns out the second the Pokémon's a Beedrill and not a Butterfree as I thought it would be. HOLY CRAP! ALL CAPS?! And... No way, I'm not reading this. A bug catcher admitting to his hobby being a total waste of time? Finally! Finally someone gets a damn clue! you damn right it takes more than bugs to get stronger, especially in a generation where there's no such thing as a good bug, as I elaborated on a lot of times before. But yeah, I found that WHAT in all caps to be pretty funny because I'm not used to seeing such strong reactions from, from NPC trainers. And this whole thing links perfectly into what I was saying at the end of the last part. Well-rounded teams are the way to go, and that's really not something you see often from trainer NPCs, because, well, they're all dedicated to a certain type, and even the gym leaders, even the gym leaders, who are supposed to be really good trainers, don't apply it. And for those who did, well, in Diamond and Pearl, everyone was slamming Candice and Valkner and Flint for not staying into their types, but yeah, at least it made it a little bit harder to sweep their entire team with one Pokémon, if not one move! So here comes Platinum with its expanded Sinew decks with more fires and more electrics and more ice types, and they're a lot easier to sweep suddenly! 
yeah, hearty guys always laugh. I'd say your your mood isn't the only thing that's hearty looking at you. I'd say your meals are equally hearty, if you know what I mean. Anyway, yeah, even the champions stay into the confines of one or two types. I mean, there was Wallace, his team was all water, though there were enough water Pokemon that it might have been a problem nonetheless, because it it's pretty strongly represented when you make up uh, one-fifth of the Pokedex. Uh, at some point you're going to be able to make a decent team made up exclusively of water types, even if it's not recommended. Then you had Steven with his rocks and steel, and his one rock steel, a special sweeping Aggron, all hail, this ought to be the easiest champion Pokemon of all time. Wait, a Venonat? Well, that's an interesting curveball after the Caterpie and the Weedle. And there was Lance with four dragons on his team. The rest were a Gyarados in his worst generation and a Charizard, but otherwise four dragons. And three of them were Dragonites with the four-time weakness to ice that comes with it. Oh, and here's one bug catcher who's clearly too stupid to listen to the good word. And as I was gonna say, yeah, when half of your team can be taken down by a moderately fast Ice Beam user, maybe it's time to review your tactics, and maybe your status as champion as well, because if that's the case, then everyone in your region is a fucking wimp. Which is further consolidated by the fact that all you need to be champion in Johto is a team in the high 40s, whereas the requirements are a lot higher in other regions. So that leaves only Blue and Cynthia as champions with decently balanced teams, and with everyone important sticking to one type, is it really a surprise that the hardest gym leaders to take down are the ones that use normal types? Uh, I re remember. The normal type is the type with the narrowest scope of weaknesses out of any type ever. And resistances shouldn't matter much in game if your team is any good at all. So yeah, the problem is that you can't inflict a mortal blow on Whitney's mill tank or Norman's slacking, especially since they're defense oriented on top of that. So yeah, really. You're stuck with neutral hits for the most part, unless you have a fighter, which usually comes in the form of Blaziken in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Though at that point in the game, it's probably still gonna be a Combustion, and when faced with a Pokémon with stats as Titanic as uh, Slacking, it might not be enough. Your, your Combustion might go down like the rest. So what I like to do personally when I do use Combusken is to use Send Attack, so yeah, it attacks once every two turns, so if I can make him miss at least a few times, it might buy me enough time for my other Pokémon to finish the job. Uh, yeah, so I went on a lot of tangents in this video, so I'm just gonna come back for a little moment to the first one I was talking about in this video, which is Crappy TMs. As I said, the teleport one is completely useless. I mean, competitively, stuff like attract and snatch really doesn't see much use, if any at all, but at least they do something. Teleport? Well, you can escape from wild battles, but usually, in-game, your, your levels are going to tower over those of wild enemies, so you can just use the run command and have the exact same result. So is there anything worse than not doing anything at all competitively and even being completely useless in-game? Yeah, there's not much worse than that for a move, huh? And I've already said it before, but just a reminder that Roar and Whirlwind are in the, were in the exact same boat uh, in the first generation. Okay, so now I'm gonna be battling my last Pokémon for this part, and after that, oh jeez. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be entering the Rock Tunnel in the next part because there can't be that many trainers left on Route 9. So don't be surprised if I'm looking for excuses not to continue this thing, but anyway, I don't know when I'll be doing it, but I suppose I'm gonna see you then!